In the previous video, I did give you an example, a counter example saying that not all intervals might have something in nested intervals might have a common point, right? But here I am giving you a sufficient condition for a nested sequence of intervals to have a common point. So having said that not all intervals, uh, nested sequence of intervals have a common point, I am saying that there is certain sufficient condition in case which is, uh, you know, followed, then there will be a common point for a nested sequence of intervals. So if I n, okay, the interval sequence that we are talking about is a closed interval a n b n for all n greater than or equal to 1. If this is a nested sequence of closed bounded intervals, then there exists a number, say delta, a real number delta such that delta belongs to I n for all. So delta belongs to all these intervals. Let's try to prove it. So what, do, what, what we should be proving right now essentially uh, the sufficient thing for us to prove is that we find out a n is less than or equal to b m for any n and m greater than or equal to 1. Uh, this will make us very comfortable in proving our point essentially when I am saying that a n is less than or equal to b n what we are trying to say is that all the a's are here, all the a's are here and all the b's are here, okay? Because then in that case what will happen, your a1 is less than b1, your a1 is less than b2 also, your an is less than b3 also and it will be less than bm. So that ways. And secondly, if we can find out a delta which lies between the supremum of a n, okay, all the n's, all the a's, okay, supremum of a n and infimum of b n. If we can find out a delta like that, that will satisfy our uh, hypothesis. That will satisfy what we require to prove that there will be a common point. So let's try to do that. Uh, mathematically let's try to find out that so let's first try to figure out what how to prove part one so what we are saying essentially is that we have this number line from minus infinity to infinity a1 a2 a3, so on and so forth, a n. Similarly, you have b m here, b3, b2, b1, so on and so forth, okay. So, let, let m and n be some arbitrary natural numbers. Let m and n be arbitrary being greater than or equal to 1 arbitrary but greater than or equal to 1 so what are the cases the case can be that uh, m can be equal to n okay then of course a n will be less than or equal to b n right if m is less than n then what will happen a m will be less than or equal to a n which is less than or equal to b n which is less than or equal to b m okay so this will imply that a n is less than or equal to b m Okay, so what are we trying to say? We are trying to say that uh, you have a m here, you have a n here, a n b n and b m here. So 
AM is less than AN, which is less than BN, which is less than VM. So, A, we have a relationship between AN and BM, like that. So, that's the case where your N, M was less than N. Now, we can also say that M can be greater than N. What will happen in that scenario? In that scenario, it will be an opposite thing now. AN will be great, less than or equal to AM. Okay, for a simple reason. That M is greater than N. Which will be less than or equal to BM. And this will be less than or equal to BN. So, again what you have is that AN is less than or equal to BM. AN is less than or equal to BM. So, those are the kind of intervals that we have. Why is this happening? Because I have a closed AN, BN given to me. This is given. Okay. So, finally what we have from all three cases, what we have is that AN is less than or equal to BM for all n and m greater than or equal to 1. Now part 2. Now part 2 requires us to prove that there is something in between the supremum of a n's and infimum of b m and that will be the common point between all the intervals. So from 1 what we have and also from and properties of supremum if you remember we have discussed properties of supremum supremum of a n will be less than or equal to infimum of B M. A N less than or equal to B M implies that supremum of A N will be less than or equal to infimum of B M. Now, so the cases can be two. So there can be two cases. What is your case number one? They can be equal. You can have supremum A N being equal to infimum BM. Okay. If that is happening, what will happen? This will equal to, this will equal to delta. Right. We can have this number equal to delta because this will be some real number. So, let that real number be delta. So, that proves our property which says that delta belongs to closed AN B. M for any M n greater than or equal to 1 and since since n and M are arbitrary I can also say that delta belongs to a n b n for all n greater than or equal to 1. So, what we are trying to say is essentially on the number line, oh sorry, on the number line you have all these sequences, right? Nested sequences. So, you have A1, B1, A2, B2, and so on and so forth. A N B N. Okay, what we are saying is that the supremum equals to infimum. So it has to be a point, and let's take that point as delta. Okay. Let's take that point as delta. Now, case number two can be that supremum. A N is less than, strictly less than, infimum B M. Okay. Then, 
by the property of of interval by the definition mere definition of interval there would be then any delta belongs to the open interval supremum an infimum infimum bm okay and again that will give us the required property that delta belongs to a n b n for all n greater than or equal to 1 okay so in this scenario what are we actually talking about we are talking about again your nested intervals so a1 a2 b2 b1 so on and so forth what we are saying is that supremum of a n is somewhere here. This is sup a n. This is inf infimum of b n or b m. Since n and m are arbitrary, we are saying that if these are two distinct points, sup a n is less than inf bm then there will be a delta between them so in any case in any case there exists a delta belonging to the set of real numbers such that delta belongs to i n for all n greater than or equal to 1. So the crux of the story is that the sufficient condition is such that if you have closed intervals a n b n, okay, if you have closed interval a n b n creating a nested sequence of intervals in that scenario you will have one common point in all the intervals.